Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, book of Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to look at verses 15 through 17, book of Isaiah chapter 40, verses 15 through 17. The title of the message is, You Are Less Than Nothing. You Are Less Than Nothing. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. The Bible says, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Brother Kayla, can you please pray for the message? Dear Father, thank you for uh, a chance to gather today to learn about your work today. Father, if you please uh, be with anyone who's not here today, uh, whether you need to get them encouragement, you know, whatever it may be. Father, if you please be with them, our brothers and sisters, Lord. And as we listen to this preaching, Lord, please help us to really uh, keep an open heart as uh, to your word, Lord. We really need to change. We really are less than nothing, Lord. Father, please help us to keep uh, our ears open as you uh, use Pastor Jake to preach your word to us, Lord. Father, please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us have a changing heart. Help us have a really humble heart, Lord. And keep us that way for the rest of the day. And Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 You know, probably, you know, people is listening, you know, some, People are already offended. When you tell them you are less than nothing, the Bible says you are less than nothing. Amen. You know, it's not I, it's God Almighty says yes. you and I are less than nothing. And let's think about what is less than nothing, right? I mean, when you try to define something as nothing, it's very, very insignificant. It's like something that you wouldn't consider any importance to it. But when it becomes less than nothing, think about it. In the sight of Almighty God, nations out there, you and I, we are less than nothing. When you and I lose the sight of us, yourself, being less than nothing, then you can't really serve God. Simple as that. People who leave the ministry, they always think they are something. But people who's used by God, they always have a testimony. Lord, use someone like me, not just nothing, but less than nothing. You have to understand, when it comes to Word of God, when it comes to preaching, when it comes to living a Christian life, you have to understand that when you feel like you're something, that's when you're going to get in trouble. That's why many people get this haughty heart, proud heart. They start coming to church. They learn some few doctrines that they never heard of, and they go out there and lead some people to the Lord. And now they feel like they're something. I mean, weren't you like that? In the past, you're like, you know what? I led, you know, several people to the Lord. So I must be something. But you're nothing. You're less than nothing. That's something that God used for his ministry. That's it. And unless you get out of your shell, unless you wake up out of your dream, thinking that you're something, one day you will fall one day you will, how should I say, you will defy God. And one day you will go against Bible believers, Bible believing pastors, pastors' wives, and the whole ministry. Why? If you always think that you're something, there's always going to be that speckle of pride in you. Yeah. But as long as there's that seed, that burns in your heart where it says, I am something, devil's going to use it. Yes. 
you know, in order to put out the fire after we have summer camp, we have our testimonies, right? You pour cold water everywhere, and you don't want to see any, any red light, yellow light anywhere, orange light, so that you want to put out the fire completely. Why? Because, you know, it could start a, you know, fire yeah. everywhere, right? Firestorm. And once fire starts, what happens? It goes very fast, yes. right? You know, we have fires in California last few years, you know, biggest fires ever in the history. You have fires going on in, you know, Canada everywhere. You have fires in Australia. And one common characteristic is, is that what? You know, once it starts, you have to wait until it finishes and it has a huge amount of destruction that goes along with it. Unless you get rid of that thought that you're something, that fire is going to start one day. I mean, that's the warning that God's telling you and me. Unless you humble yourself on a daily basis, unless you have that humility in your heart, unless you go to the Lord on your knees on a daily basis, you will think that you're something. It's always sad to see in our ministry, right? You know, we've been here for many, many years. There are people who were really fired up for God, but they're no longer here. Why? Because they always think there's something. That's why. Right. You know, they always think that someone has to treat me better than how they're treating me. Why? Are you that important? I mean, why should someone treat you really well compared to another person? Because you led someone to the Lord? I mean, you're, you did what you're supposed to do, exactly. right? Yeah. Is it because you're here today? Is that why someone has to treat you more special? Is it because you go out on the street preaching and then you shout out? Is that why someone has to, you know, nominate you for the Christian of the year? <laughs> or because, you know, you bring food to church? Is it because, you know, you're doing something at church, teaching, you know, cleaning up? Do you have to be noticed? I mean... You have to get rid of all of it. That's why the devil's giving it to you. Yes. That's why people, complainers, are not too far away. They're the ones that always feel like someone has to give him attention. But I don't give attention to something that's less than nothing. And the Bible says you and I are less than nothing. Right. Amen. Why would you deserve any attention when you know that you're less than nothing? Perfect. I mean, if you don't... Have to if you don't have any model at home, you know. Besides from you know Jesus Christ is Lord, saved by grace, His blood atones all sins. You know. Besides from Christ and salvation, you should have a model, right? Like this verse, you know, Isaiah forty seventeen. I am less than nothing. Then funny thing happens, like your pride kind of goes away. Yes. I mean, in the sight of Almighty God. In front of Lord Jesus Christ, who's in you, you're like, oh, man, Lord, I am truly less than nothing. So don't ever stop at just being nothing, right? And then people feel sorry for themselves, right? I'm nothing, you know, and the human emotions come in. Are you one of those people out there? Like, you have a lot of failures in your life. Some brought on by yourself. Most of them brought on by yourself. Yeah. Maybe some of them because of associations that you have. Maybe you've been, you know, conned, right? Maybe you had a bad upbringing. Maybe your environment wasn't as ideal. And you're like, man, I feel like nothing today. Have you heard those phrases and those, you know, statements? Have you ever told yourself, you know, some days, like you look yourself in the mirror, like, man, I feel like nothing today. You know, I haven't done anything. You know, work's not the best. You know, family situation's not the best. Finance is not the best. You know, my weight is not the best. You know, and you're like, man, I feel like nothing. You know, no, 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 no. I mean, you're not nothing. You know, you're less than nothing. So then, when you look at it in that terms, oh man, you know, I shouldn't even be thinking about being nothing. Yeah. You know, I'm just. Someone who's less than nothing, who's something because of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, Christians, 
you always have to acknowledge it. You have limitations. That's where we always fall. You know, when Lord gives us a little bit of grace to participate in his ministry, and you feel like you're something, right? You know, I teach. I lead people to the Lord, right? I pass out tracts. I give testimonies left and right, day and noon and night. So I'm something. But you know what, brother? You know what, sister? You're less than nothing. That's all I could tell you, right? Only thing you could say is, I give glory to God who uses someone like me who's less than nothing. Yes. When you know you're less than nothing, man, you stand under the sky, you look up in the sky, and you're in grand awe, right? And we're looking up at the sky, man, this creator of the universe, you know, where I'm like, like this, like this, you know, dust in the air. And then he actually made something out of me by dying for me on the cross, shedding his precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Man, then you're like, wow. Man, every day is like thankful day. Amen. Every day is a grateful day. Every day is where you're appreciative more and more because Lord can use someone like me who is less than nothing. So first thing is this. You know, you have to acknowledge that you're frail. You're frail and you're fragile. Human beings, whether you're saved or not, you're fragile and you're frail. Simple as that. Are we going to live forever? No. Are you getting stronger as you age? No. No, right? Are you getting smarter as you age? Maybe. <laughs> you should become wiser, right, as you yeah. age, right? Do you recover faster after you get hurt, no. you know? after you get older and older and older, right? Do you remember better? I mean, that's a question that we should ask all the, you know, people over 21, right? Yeah. Do you remember better than before you were 21 or, you know, young age? No. So that just tells you that, you know what? I'm very, you know, frail and I'm very fragile being. What does that mean? I could break at any moment. You have to understand, people who think that they have no limitations, those are the people that, who become very, very proud. There's always a balance between surrendering all to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the sake of his ministry, and those people who surrender partial and who keeps it to themselves and trying to show people that they're strong. Right? What good comes of it when you show to people that out of your own will, out of your own strengths, that you're strong. How long do you think it's going to last? I mean, Lord could just take it away just like that. And few people, you know, I know Christians, their strengths were just taken away. You know why? Because God's like, oh, are, you, oh, are you kidding? You're less than nothing. Who do you think you are? Right. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? So, so, so it's hard to illustrate this because it's, you know, you consider like the lowest and lowest of the class and people like nothing, right? But we're talking about something that's less than nothing. So I don't even know what in your definition, in your mind, that what is less than nothing. Then you're like, wow, man, that blows up my mind. But that's you. The something that blows up in your mind, that's what you are. You are that fragile, you are that frail, less than nothing human being. But thank God you and I are saved. Yes. That's why we can be strong in the Lord. You know, I can do all things through Christ with strength in his me. Then question goes to you, Christian. Do you find your strength in the Lord always? or from yourself, who is less than nothing? Who is going to be stronger? The Lord. I mean, think about it. If this side is the strongest person in the whole wide universe, and this is a so-called strong person in your mind, which is you, 
then what's going to happen? Uh, it's like trying to, you know, funny thing at the summer camp. I don't know who started it. People love doing arm wrestling, right? You know, yeah. Boys <laughs> and the girls, right? Like, I'm stronger, you know, I'm strong, right? You know, I mean, it's fun and games, right? But who's going to beat our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when it comes to arm wrestling? But if you have him on your corner, you could beat anybody in arm yes. wrestling, right? You know, bring that brother you know, I think it was Brother Dennis, you know, who was the strongest, right? Very, you know, strong man, you know? I could beat him in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe not physically, but per se, you know? But if the Lord said it, yeah, I could do it, right? I mean, that's where with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. If you put your 100% strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you and I have to be careful, because some of us think that we are more intellectual than other people because of your education or because of your experience, right? Some people, the funny term is what? Street smart, right? Because you grew up on the street, so you know. I believe so, brother. I believe so, sister. Probably you know better than someone who grew up in an enclosed, you know, suburban, you know, no travel at all because you grew up in a you know, rough part of the neighborhood, right? But that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Right? I mean, is that going to give you strength to go on each day as a Christian? No. No. What do those things actually bring? It brings those worldly ways of doing things. As a Christian, you have to be careful. When you don't put 100% strength in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to bring in outside knowledge. You're going to... Trust and enlist in outside things. That's why many, many times you and I get into trouble because we not only 100% try to trust Jesus Christ and Him alone, but we always bring in that extra, extra friend along. Okay? You know, we always, it's a rhetoric, we hear it all the time. You have to surrender 100% to the Lord. But you always have that 2%, always trying to save it for yourself. True. Like, Lord, I'll give you 23 hours of my day. But that one hour, I'll just enjoy myself. I'm just going to enjoy my pleasure, right? You know? Man, we could work like that, right, Lord? Man, can you imagine if Lord Jesus Christ only bled 98% of the blood <laughs> and then 2% were missing? We won't have complete atonement, no. right? If Lord Jesus Christ died only 98%, you and I can't be saved. No. If Lord Jesus Christ only you know, rose from that 98%, that's it. We're not going to be risen from the dead, right? We're not going to be, we're not going to have that complete salvation. Then, if you know the answer, Christian, why are you not giving Lord Jesus Christ 100%? Why is there always an excuse, right? That's why... As a less than nothing people, you and I should never have excuse. And what does that mean? When Lord points certain things out in your life, first word should come out from your mouth is, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes. Instead of, when did this happen? <laughs> Don't you ask that to like a lot of people? When someone comes up to you and say, you know, I mean, and it's a legit case because they care for you. Hey, you know, brother, hey, sister, you know, these, these things happen, right? You know, so let's resolve this. Your first reaction is, when did this happen? I mean, that is a bad attitude as a Christian. Yeah. What does that show you? We heard a brother say accountability. They have zero accountability. They don't want no accountability. They don't want responsibility. They don't want to be hold on to anything. And if that's you, you better get right with the Lord. Help me. Because you are going the road of destruction. Yes. Because what if, you know, you did something wrong today and then the Lord reveals it two years from now? Does that mean that it's okay? Ah, Lord, that was a long time ago. You know, bygones be bygones. Imagine we had this, you know, 
Catholic molestation cases, right? Everywhere. Yes. Imagine you ask those victims, hey, that happened 15 years ago, so forget about it. Wow. When you commit sin, you are to be held accountable when, wherever, it's brought up to the light. Yes. And the best reaction you could do is like David. When Nathan pointed it out, he said, I have sinned against God. Amen. Why you always try to give excuse and justify yourself? Right? The reason you're hearing those things is not because of someone planning something against you. It's because God wants to get your attention. Why is it that always people, people are so dumb. You and I are dumb. Yes. Because Amen. we don't think spiritually. We don't think deep enough. No, sir. We always think that people are out there to get us. Yeah. It's not people, it's God. Amen. God uses people to try to get you right. Thank you. God uses people to try to get your attention. God uses people to make you see yourself that you're blinded, you know, fool on your way to your destruction. Because... You're just living the life of Romans 8.13. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Amen. You're going to die. And the, what a horrible way to die because of your sin, because you're living in your flesh. Yes. Because you're blinded by your excuses, your own justification. Good you know, shame. people, you have to understand. If you're that person who always, ju always want to justify something, then you're going to have something coming. God has to chastise you. Whenever I try to justify something, it never ends well. No. I mean, that's why people don't like lawyers. All they do want to do is justify, <laughs> even though the truth is out there, right? This person killed someone, but there is a good justification. You know, he just it wasn't in his right mind, so he should go scot-free. I don't think so. Ask the family members, yeah. right? Man, drunk drivers. You know what? When I'm drunk, I'm not myself. So I'm not liable. Oh, yeah? I mean, ask the you know, two people that you killed and the other three who's going to be you know, disabled for the rest of their life and can't walk. Yeah. There's always going to be something that's going to be brought to you because God wants to correct you. And sometimes God uses preaching, God uses pastors, Amen. God uses certain events in your life. Yes. When those things come, brethren, best reaction is always David's reaction. Why do you have to go any further, right? Yeah. You want to be like Saul? Wow. I had to do this because, you know, because I had justification. You know, Brother Caleb preached this, you know, on Wednesday. I mean, he already set the foundation for today. Too many people out there, even though when they listen to preaching, they don't take it to heart. So if this is new to you, but you were there on Wednesday, your heart wasn't right. I mean, it shouldn't be new to you. It should be something that should be a reminder. It should be something that's convicting you harder. Yes. It should be that strong preaching that you've been desiring. Man, I've been a sorry Christian who always try to give excuses. Amen. I've been a sorry Christian who always tries to justify. I've been a sorry Christian who never looks at from the point of the Bible, always tries to look at from the point of my own view, my family's view, my loved one's view. If your wife's wrong, your wife's wrong against the Bible. If your husband's wrong, he's wrong against the Bible. Yes. Are you going to be like, okay, my wife, my lovely wife, love of my life, my other half, she's against the Bible. So I'm going to say, it's okay. It, it's justifiable. Are you, you going to tell that to Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment seat of Christ? No. When he points it out to you? Man, as a head of household, what would you do? You went along with it. You have to stand up for the truth. Wife, same thing. If your husband goes, you know what? I'm tired. No church today. I'm tired. No praying. I'm tired. No more Bible reading. I'm tired. You know what? Just leave me alone. With my phone, couch, you know, just leave me alone. I don't want to do anything spiritual. And kids are like looking at you like funny. And your wife's like, ah, you know, I don't want to argue with this man anymore. 
I've had it all these years, man. He never listens to me. So you just give up. There's no spiritual growth, growth in the family. You may grow, you think, but there's no peace in the house. Whenever there's a time to read the Bible, do anything spiritual, go to the ministry, go to the church, you don't even want to talk about it because you feel very, very uneasy, right? Are you that wife, right? Where you let your husband do whatever they want because you don't want to argue. I mean, same thing with husbands, right? Yeah. I mean, children too. You know, you have your voice, speak up, right? Then, think about it. When you know you're less than nothing, you don't have to worry about it. Are you trying to argue with me, wife, husband? I'm less than nothing. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, you know? I mean, it's pitiful that you're trying to argue with someone who's less than nothing, you know? True. Yeah, you're less than nothing too, yeah. you know? Why are we even arguing when we're less than nothing? You know, let's just go with what the Bible says, Amen. right? Then you have to stand. If you have to stand right here, and if they're right there, you just stand. You don't have to follow them, right? There's going to be arguments. They're going to be fighting. You don't have to follow them. You stand where you're supposed to stand. Either they get right with the Lord and come back to you, or God's going to teach them some lessons and they're going to come back to you. You know, if they truly care about, you know, word of God. Do not be afraid of confrontation. Do not be afraid of arguments when you stand up for the word of God, when you stand up for what is truth, what is right. You have to hurt someone's feelings sometimes for them to realize it. But you're less than nothing. They're less than nothing. What feelings to hurt? I'm less than nothing. You know, I don't really need to. I mean, what am I? You know, I mean, I just need to get right with the Lord. You know, and do something for the Lord. You know, when people realize that when they know that they're less than nothing, then changes happen in their life. Because God saved someone who's not nothing, but who's less than nothing. Wow. Have you ever had that gratitude? Have you ever had that, you know, thankfulness to your Lord and Savior who saved not just a sinner, but who saved a sinner who's less than nothing? It's like you're, you don't even belong in prison. Like you, you need to go that like 200 feet down, you know, because you're less than nothing, right? I mean, you can't even live out on the street, right? You have to go into like a dung field somewhere, you know, because you're less than nothing, right? Because when you realize that, man, I'm less than nothing, but I've been acting like nothing or something, man, nothing good really came up out of my life. There's always sin hovering around. You know, it's almost like this. You know, I, I, hey, devil, world, flesh, I'm less than nothing. You know, man, I, I, why would I even listen to you? I, I can't even, I don't want to even move to you, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like really down here, and you're trying to make me something here. Mm. That's not me. That's not me, right? Devil's always trying to make you. Oh, you're, you're over here, man. You're over here, woman. You're over here, children. Just get up a little bit, you know. And that's when, you know, start, things happen. You just, you don't have to go too far. Just look at past week or two in your life when you got in trouble with the Lord or sin. What happened, right? Yeah. Because you listen to the devil. You listen to the world. You listen to your flesh. When, obviously, you're, you're already dead with Christ, but, you know, you are that zombie trying to get out. Yeah. Trying to get out, you know. And when that happens, what happens? As a human being, it's futile, right? It's futile. You can't, you can't really accomplish anything with that kind of mindset. And when you're doing something for the Lord, you have to understand, everything out of my effort, I mean, this is point number two, those are writing now, you know, when you do it out of your effort, it's futile, right? There's only futility involving. What does that mean, right? No matter how big, no matter how, I mean, grand, grand, grand it seems, it's just going to disappear like that bubble. 
And sometimes you see a lot of bubbles out there, right? And what happens to bubble eventually? It pops. When you're doing it with your efforts, and you want to make it big, and you want to make yourself known, it's going to blow up one day. And when it does, and if it has grown bigger because of your sinful ways, it's going to affect people around you. It's going to not only hurt you, it's going to hurt your wife, husband, your mom, your dad, your children, and everybody involved. Amen. Just think of your own efforts as futile effort. Yes. And it's not going to accomplish anything when I do my own way, right? right? That's why, you know, God obviously uses people by his grace to still lead people to the Lord, right? But don't think that it's because of you it's happening, right? right? Because God wants, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, so yes. he's just keeping promise of his word. Amen. But you don't ever think that, hey, my efforts are making a difference. No. Ah, no, 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 no. You know, you're less than nothing. You can't do anything. That's right. <laughs> right? You know, always remember that. You're less than nothing. You can't do anything. Only way you could do something is it's like you get strength from the Lord. Amen. It's like this. We have our phone. If we don't have battery, we can't use it. Right. And then you have that charging station. And then you charge your phone. And then it works. But if phone's not charged, what happens? You can use it. That's you. And that should be me. You can't do anything unless you are charged by Lord Jesus Christ. Good. And then battery runs out. I mean, some, some batteries are bad. Right? You guys have some... I mean, if you have so, much, so many applications on your phone, it drains the, you know, batteries <laughs> out. So for some of you, your life is full of mess, you know. You have so many applications going on in your life, at work, at school, at home, you know, anywhere, That's right? It. Then it becomes very drained. Then you have to charge a little longer. Yeah. You have to stay with the Lord a little longer. And don't do anything unless it's sufficiently charged. So the uh, other day, I, my phone battery ran out. So I charged for a little bit. It was 5%. I think it was lying to me. After 30 seconds, it ran out again, right? <laughs> so what's the lesson here? You have to charge it longer, yes. right? You have to spend more time with the Lord. Amen. You have to spend more time doing things of the Lord. Then when you are sufficiently charged, you could go out and really do things for the Lord. Many, many Christians, they're, they're not charged properly. That's why they're out there doing things of God, but they're a mess inside. And many Christians hide it very well. Right. But you can't hide from God. Amen. You're less than nothing. Yes. I mean, so you, you definitely can, right? And so if you've been that Christian where you just charge very little bit, come to church on Sunday, oh yeah, hey, that gives me 2%, right? You know, hey, you know, study for Bible study, oh, another 2%. You know, have fellowship with the brethren, you know, maybe 1%, you know, yeah, I think that's good enough. Man, you go out to the world, out, out the door after Sunday, man, you're battery drained while you're driving home. And then you expect to live a strong Christian life? You can't. No. But when you know that you're less than nothing, man, I need full battery. I need full charge. Yeah. Every day, every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I have to be fully charged. Yes, sir. Then when you're fully charged, you could go on and on. Man, you could have multiple apps going at once, but you have enough battery to go on. I mean, you have so many attacks in your life from the devil, the world, the flesh, your husband, your wife, your children, your coworkers, you know, your TV, you know, your wherever you go, your music, whatnot. It's always attacking. And it really drains you very fast because you're never fully charged. When was the last time you felt like, man, I really, you know, did my best to spend time with the Lord? You know, I, I don't really have regrets, you know. I really spent a lot of time with the Lord. 
I did my best witnessing, right? I did my best, you know, praying for my brethren. I did my best for praying for my pastor, pastor's wife. I did my best, you know, for praying for my loves, loved ones out there. And I did my best to, you know, witness whenever the Lord gave me a chance. I did my best to give my all, not just, you know, my efforts and everything. I give monetary to the Lord. You know, everything I did to the Lord. When was the last time you've been fully charged like that, every part of your life? If you don't remember, then parts of your life are uncharged, which means there's no battery, which means you're full of sin, which means you backslid in, and if you don't do anything about it, what happens? Yeah. Sometimes phone becomes permanently dead. Amen. That's when we have spiritually dead Christians, yes. right? They were trying to survive as nothing but less than nothing, not realizing with that couple percent of battery just going to church but neglecting every part of their Christian walk during the week. And then one day, that wasn't sufficient enough. So what happens if you can't permanently dead? And those are the people you don't see here anymore, right? Each person has their own trials. Each person has their own things to go through. But you have to realize that as that person, each person, I am less than nothing, and I need full battery spiritually. Yes. If you don't, then eventually it doesn't, I mean, even myself, right? Who am I kidding, you know, full of sin, full of errors? You know what? No, I'm just, my better is going to run out too. And then, you know, that's a lot of preachers sometimes you see. They're burned out. Understandable. But does that mean that you have to stop going? No. My phone gets hot sometimes. And it just shuts down. I hate it, right? Phone gets hot sometimes. Apps don't work. Hate it, right? You have to cool it. Then you just cool yourself. How are you going to cool it? Best place to cool yourself is in the Word of God Amen. and in prayer. One-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Yes. Right? Forget about everything. I just got to spend some time with the Lord. I got to cool my battery. I got to cool my phone, you know. And then I just got to, in that great setting, I need to get, you know, get some rest in the Lord. Some of you, you know, when you realize you're less than nothing, you have to understand only place you're going to find peace, only place you're going to find comfort, only place you're going to find strength, only place where you felt like it's worth the time is in the Lord. That's it. That, that has to be every day, though. You know? yes. Again, if you know that you're only something by charging of Lord Jesus Christ, and when you know that you're only something by grace of God, when you know that you're only something because of his grace and mercy, then who are you going to go on a daily basis? Where are you going to find your answers? Your wife? And she may be great. But well, is she always right? No, sir. Your husband? He may be great. No. He may be, I mean, is he always right? No. Your children? No. Your parents? Right? You know, some of the worst advices that people ever get are from their loved ones. That's true. Because they don't go with the word of God. Yes. Dan, I'm sorry. You have to think of them just like what the Bible says. Less than nothing. Amen. Then you go to something is more than Anything. That's the word of God. Yes. Find answer in the word of God, right? Amen. Stop trying to go with the feelings, you know, Dr. Fields of the world out there. You know, don't go to those things, right? Go to the word of God, Amen. right? Go to people of God, yes. right? <laughs> Your counsel should not be coming from TV screen, oh, right? No. Your counsel should not be coming from internet sites where there's all about love, 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 love. Yeah. You know, you never do anything wrong. You know, not putting down psychiatrists or psychologists out there. I mean, but many times the central theme is what? You make that person feel better. Yeah. Sometimes with drugs, right? Yeah. Yeah. But is that a good solution? No. no. Nothing changes. That's right. It's temporary. And if you ever want to permanently 
get it right with the Lord, you have to get it right yes. all the way. I wonder how our ministry will look like if all of us are 100% fully charged in the things of God, in the Word of God, in the ministry, loving our brethren, you know, through, through, I mean, through ups and downs, right? right. You truly are 100% sold out, surrendering to the Lord. Ultimately, realizing that, Lord, thank you for using someone like me who is less than nothing. Man, then when, when church is full of brethren like that, it only exudes spirit-filled life. Yes. You don't have to tell nobody anything. <laughs> they just know how to resolve things. They just know what to do because their final authority is based on the word of God. Yes. Not another person's feelings, not your family's priority. No, everything's priority is just 100% Lord Jesus Christ and the ministry out there. Let us not go down the path of many people before us currently is going to happen in the future who feels like there's something and misses out everything you know, for all eternity. Let's pray. Dear Father, you know, we are just fragile. I mean, everything that we do from our effort is futile, Lord. Help us to remember that all of us are less than nothing. I mean, it is an amazing thing to understand that we are not just nothing, but we're less than nothing, Lord, with humility and humble, constantly guarding our heart, Lord God. Help us to serve you in that matter. Help us to find strength and be fully charged in your word, in prayer, in doing your ministry, in doing your work, instead of trying to get our energy from the sins of this world and the pleasures for a moment. I pray that all of us here will just be truly be thankful for the salvation that you've given to us freely because you did something for such a lowly, lowly people like us who's less than nothing. Help us to do something for you because we can do something in your Lord. Find strength in your Lord for everything that we do. And above all, Lord, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Bless the rest of the day, Lord God. In Joseph, we pray. Amen. Amen.